So, I know some faces here, I don't know some. And we're going to start by losing up a bit. Let's lose it up, okay? I need everybody to come to the front, please. I don't want people at the back at all, please, so that we can have a major number of people seated here. SQI College of ICT, SQI College of ICT, let's come forward. Come on. Let's come forward. Let's come forward, everybody. So, how many of us know what is going on exactly here today? I know that some of us have been here for more than two months, so I'm sure you have an idea of what we're doing today. But can you tell us why we are doing this and what this represents? I need you to, um, I need someone to come up. Can you come forward? There are a lot of seats here. I need you seated here, please, at the front. At the, there's so much seats in front. Please just come forward. We can't. Let's do this. For everyone that is at the back, come forward to the front. Yes. Please come forward. Come forward. Thank you. Come forward. Thank you. So we're going to be taking the Nigeria anthem and the school anthem. Please, can we, can we make it faster? Can we do that faster? Come forward, please. Come forward. Can we take the front seats? Please, can we hurry up? Thank you. If it, I don't know. Is it, the front seat is not biting anybody. Come on, guys. Come on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, like I said before, we're going to start by um, reciting the Nigerian anthem and the school anthem. So let us rise, please. <laughs> Okay, so um, I think the, the school anthem, the school anthem will be. So it's something that all SQI students are supposed to know without even looking at their notes or their phones, right? So the uh, lyrics is being displayed on the screen. Why I want you to follow along. The sound is going to be played as well. All right. So uh, the lyric says, "Time we do not have it all the time, so we cherish every moment and give it all our best." All right. So uh, are we ready? Yeah. Are we ready? Yeah. Okay. Let's get the sound. Let's hold on. have it all the time, so we cherish every moment and give it all our best, and see, we cannot do it all on believe in team spirit, walking together, please hold it for a moment, hold it for a moment, hold it for a moment, alright, I want us to start again, some of us are just looking at me, alright, can you see it on the screen now? All right, please go to the beginning. Go back to the beginning. Go back to the beginning. All right, this is the beginning. Time, we do not have it all the time, so we cherish every moment and give it all our best, right? So that's the progression for all the uh, verses. Is that okay? All right. Are we ready? Yeah. Okay, before we go, let's sing this together, right? It says, let me sing it, then you go after that time. Time, we do not have it all the time, so we cherish every moment and give it all our best and see. Did you get that? All right, are we ready? Are we ready? All right, let's take it together. Please, before you play the song, let's take it together. One, two, three, go. So we 
cherish every moment and give it all our best and we cannot do it all alone living with the spirit walking together this is our goal for our Africa. Please go back to the go back to the slide. Yeah. Thank you. Is the sound ready? All right. Go back to time. Go back to time. Please pause it. Pause it. Are we ready? One, two, three, go. Time. We do not have it all the time, so we cherish every moment and give it all our best. We cannot do it alone. It is the spirit walking together in mind. The great invention of our time, better by creator to make us go create. This is our goal for Africa. Long we've been receiving, and time and we shall give to the world. Now let's get the sound. Three, go. Time. We do not have it all the time, so cherish every moment and give it all our best. We cannot do it all alone. We believe in spirit, walking together. And the great inspiration of our time, consistent by Creator, to make us co creator. This is a goal for Africa. For so long we can receive in what time and we shall give to the world. Making Africa a tight continent, one mile at a time. Can, you, can I hear you echo that? Making Africa a tight continent, one mile at a time. I can't hear you. Making Africa a tight continent, one mile at a time. One more time. Making Africa a tight continent. One mile at a time. Please put a round of applause together for yourself. Thank you. Now you can have your seat. Thank you. Thank you very much. For some of us that still need to learn the answer, please, it will be on our uh, individual school group or class group. So please make sure you um, familiarize yourself with it. Thank you. Okay, so right about now, we are going to be talking about what my talk is really. And I just want to give you um, what we are doing. I want to give you a breakdown of what we're doing here. And um, I welcome everybody. I welcome you from everywhere you're joining us from, from all campuses. I welcome you from Obomosho, our main campus. I welcome you from Oshobo, from um, Iworo Challenge Campus, and all of our international students, you are welcome. Thank you very much for joining us today. Okay, so, um, my talk. So we are in SPI College of Washington learning um, one tech course or another. And we're wondering why have we put this together to why have we created or have created time for this particular reason, right? For this for this purpose. Why why what is my talk? Why are we doing this? So when you learn, you need to understand what um, you are learning and how to put it out there, you know, in the world. So SPI bring about created time, crafted out time from, for every second um, Monday of the month, from 10 to 12, just so we can um, make you understand what my talk is about, what we are doing here. So basically, is to give us insight about um, the tech space, not just the tech space, um, about the, the workspace, about what you're going to be getting out there, right? Some of us are, are creative, so we understand what we're saying. Some of us are going to be having our own empire, our own um, businesses. And some of us are going to be taking roles 
major roles in, um, in the future, right? So you want to understand that, okay, how do you put all of this together? You want to, you want to, you want to come to that understanding, you want to come to that knowledge and, and get yourself informed, yes. Okay, so another thing is um, we're going to be having a book review uh, by Kenny Day or Lalenye. We're going to be having Bisohe and, um, and uh, talking about herself and how SQI has um, impacted her life. Okay, so we're going to be having um, a lot of activities today. So get ready, get set. I hope we go with your writing material. We have an amazing person that is going to be speaking to us. And is is trust me, you don't want to miss today. If you have friends that are still in the house, let them know that this is where it's happening. It will help their life and their career. Okay, so um, we'll have time for questions. So please get ready your questions once um, it's time. We'll have time for for questions and then uh, Miss Ali Duny and Ali will be having announcements and then the closing remark will be by Bisoye Kubumayike. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, right about now, we are going to um, be having our book review by Kennedy or Lalele. Is it ready? Okay, so um, our book review will be much later. So that will be later, later, later. All right, so is Bisoye here? Oh, that's nice. Okay, so we'll have Bisoye, my story in high. Please come through. Hi, hi, hi. So um, tell us your name and, of course, share your story with us. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, everyone. Firstly, I would like to thank everyone, my tutors and SQI for the privilege to share my story so far. I studied anatomy for my BSc, so I knew nothing about coding. And it would, like computer or exposure to computer was something I didn't really, I didn't really have the opportunity to have growing up. I was always scared of computer, so I got to know about coding through a friend and of course Instagram. So I went online and there were so many materials online. I can't say they're not good, but I lacked that, um, the culture, or let me say the curriculum wasn't structured enough, like you have a lot of materials to work on, so I didn't really know what to do. And then I tried to sell the internet to no good tech institutions in Ibado and Lagos. And check it true, <laughs> the fees were like, oh my God, what is this? And I went to SQI, so it's incorporated. Compared to other organizations or other tech schools, SQI is way more affordable. So I was kind of skeptical, like, okay, this institution is kind of affordable. Will the quality be there? Will the structure be there? But well, I've heard about SQI a couple of times. So there is this brother I know who is a very like a tech guru, guru, guru. So I have seen him. There is any tech institution in Ibadan that is very good. So he talked about SQI and I was like, okay, for you to mention it, that means SQI must be really good. So coming here in November, fortunately they were, they were on discount. That's something amazing about this institution as well. I can't say it's, it's, it's not really for the income, based on my own experience, where they say the ambition is actually to make Africa a tech world. I believe that so very much, because they go on discounts just to make sure it's affordable enough for every class of individual. So I came here, I got into SQI, I started um, January courts with, um, HTML and CSS, and I remember my first lecturer, AY. <laughs> he always says, um, English is a code, a very sound. So that was tough for him. He's not here, but that's tough for him. He did it very well. He did very well in 
giving us a solid foundation as to what coding entails. And from there, Mr. Kinans, please come for her on CSS. She, she told us about CSS bootstrap and all that. She did very well. And she always, you have to do your assignments and all that. So it's been an amazing journey. And I'm on level two right now. I also have an amazing lecturer in my life. Not just me can say well to that, but I believe all the students here in level two, Mr. Dan, Mr. Daniel. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sam, for your effort so far. So we have amazing lecturers in FPU, right? They are going to push you and just to make sure you be the best version of yourself. And the assignments are there. We can always stay here to evening, Sometimes to 7 p.m. This place is still open. 8 p.m. This place is still open, just to ensure people are using the facilities available to code. And I am saying that personally because I'm doing software engineering, front-end development to be precise. And I'm sure it's not. That's not. This is not just my story. It's something every other person can relate to. So thank you so much, SQI, for the force, for the energy, for the facility, for making it um, affordable enough for everybody. SQI is a great institution, SoftQuest Incorporated, structured, a place of quality. Thank you so much, SQI. Okay, so thank you. Thank you for sharing your story. I'd like to ask you some questions. Um, when you started, you talk about um, having a different background um, to the tech. What, what were your expectations? What, what were you looking at exactly? What drew you to, to tech exactly? As a young graduate, right? And you understand, we have a lot of young graduates around um, who they don't even understand where, what else life has for them, what, what choices they have. What, what led you to this? Thank you very much. The world is going tech. The world at large is going tech. And I just wanted a career I could build. Okay, for me, like my BSc, that's, I can't build. I probably have to go into medicine and surgery, especially in Nigeria, before you can build a career in anatomy. Like I had to go into medicine and surgery. And then with all the issues, like I was just not really okay with it. So I wanted a career I could build without really going back to the four walls of college or like to school, spending another four years and all that. And so I got exposure to software engineering and it's kind of, because I love math and I love physics and I love solving puzzles, like something like that. So when I went online, I was kind of solving some solutions, recording and all that. It's not like it really has to do with math. But there's just this concept of you solving problems. Like, I want to get to the bottom of that. So, and I really loved it. And that's why, that's why I came here and carry on. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to ask the question again for this time around to help you understand. Okay. All right. Okay, so we have, how many of us have been following the book review? I know, Mr. Daniel, <laughs> thank you. If you have not been following the book review, you are wrong. Come on, you have to read a book every month. Come on, you have to, you don't stop learning. You don't stop learning. You don't stop learning. So we have Mr. Kennedy or Lale here. Please come. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kenny Olale, and I'm privileged this morning to share with you from insight from a very great book titled As a Man Thinkers by James Allen. Sorry, I was a bit late, so I was coming from the travel. I'm a student from SWI Commercial. And though the book was written, written in 1903, that's a century ago, but the book still maintained the, the informative and still relevant as it was a century ago. So, um, 
Let us dive into the book and explore what the book has for us. Um, originally, I prepared for to use a slide, but I'm a bit late. The key lessons, out of many key lessons that is in the book, I just crafted out some key lessons there. And the number one is the power of thought. Power of thought. And James Allen emphasized that the quality of our thoughts determine the quality of our lives. The quality of our thoughts determine the quality of our lives, which means the quality of our thought is directly proportional to the, the, uh, the quality of our life. And our thought has, has the, 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 the power to, to change our life, either uh, negatively or positively. And the second one, let me go to the third one because of time. I think I don't have much time. The self-realization. Self-realization. The realization that we are the architect of our own destiny by trans transcending limiting beliefs and embracing our inherent power. We tap into the infinite reservoir of creativity and possibility within us. Through self awareness and self mastery, we unleash our full potential and live authentically. This was this is saying that, and through our thoughts, we are the one who crafted our. We are we are crafting our life. Whatever our life is displaying to people, it is established first in our thoughts. And let us go to the practical lesson. Before I go to the practical lesson, let me mention another point, the law of cause and effect. Every thought we think has a corresponding effect on our life. In life, we have the power to shape our destiny. This means we are responsible for making ourselves who we are. And think of it this way. Everyone, including me, has the power to build, to build up ourselves or to, to, to tear down ourselves. Imagine, for example, let us say there is one, or I need to person quickly, maybe sister, two of you, maybe the honorable, because of time, maybe the, because, uh, the honorable director of this, uh, of SQI College, asked our sister, maybe gave her a blank check or offer the, to, of making a choice to choose being to choose between being his personal assistant or his personal driver. And if I ask my sister now, what will what will she uh, choose between the two of them? What will be her answer? My sister can say it is up to her, and that's the what the key point is. Keywords I'm looking for. It is up to us. So we can build up ourselves, we can tear down ourselves through our thoughts. You can go ahead. Thank you very much. You can go and see that. So that's and the practical the practical application. Number one here is daily reflection. Take time each day for quiet reflection and Please let me know if my time is, is up. All right, thank you very much. Take time each day for quiet reflection and intro, introspection, identifying recurring thought pattern and belief that may be holding you back and consciously replace them with empowering thoughts. Every one of us has this um, reoccurring thought that used to hold us back. And Alien was saying here that we should replace them with empowering positive thoughts. And some of the uh, lessons we are, all right, I'm coming. Some of the lessons we are gaining from the mind thought is one of the empowering thoughts we can replace with it. And uh, in conclusion, we just finished reading about as, as a man thinker. And next month, or this month rather, we will be looking at the book, The Power of Work by Richard, Richard Templer. So I'm um, just urging us people, please let us, let us 
let us be active in the uh, mind, mind, mind talk uh, book review. The, what we are doing there is just to empower our mind and not to limit ourselves to, to what we are now. Let us think ahead and I trust the group will benefit us. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, so some of us that are still yet to join the uh, book review, please do. So this is the time we have all been waiting for. So the t current theme for the month, for the, 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 the current theme for the month is 10X. So what do we all understand about 10X? So you should set 10x rules. Actually, say you should set you should set targets for yourself that are 10 times greater than what you believe you can achieve. 10 times greater than what you believe you can achieve. That is it. So today's topic is 10x having results beyond the ordinary, and we have an amazing. Guest with us today, Mr. Femi Luda Agbebede. So I'm going to read his um, bio. And please pay attention. Please pay attention. Let's pay attention. Okay, so Femi Luda Agbebede, widely known as FLA, <laughs> is a visionary in the world of business and personal development with a remarkable blend of expertise and certification. FLA has emerged as a distinguished peak performer coach, astute business and life strategies, and a seasoned management consultant. His influence transcends various domains, encompasses strategy, human resource management, performance management, leadership development, emotional intelligence, coaching, human capital development, Mind engineering and thought architecture. Yeah. FLA's credentials are a testament to his commitment to excellence. He holds the coveted titles of certified life coach, practitioner, practitioner of neuro linguistic programming, NLP, and certified management consultant, CMC, from the International Council of Managing Consulting Institute. Notably, he is a fellow of the International Management Consultant Certification Board, a recognition of his outstanding contributions to the consulting industry. He is also an author, is also an author of 18 books. Please, everyone, let us be on our feet and put our hands together as we welcome Mr. L.A. <laughs> particular about what knowledge is. We just want to blow. We just want to hammer. So we can buy a home for mama. That's what we are mostly going after right now. But when I heard about Mind Talk, I think of, I've been told about twice. And when I heard about Mind Talk, I said, we're going to bring it in the month of April. So it's no problem. And yeah, yeah. I, I want to celebrate you all for being here. Also celebrate the person sitting next to you this morning. Tell the person sitting next to you, I'm so glad you're sitting next to me. 
Can you tell that person? Tell the person, I'm so glad you're sitting next to me. And ask the person, do you know why I'm glad you're sitting next to me? Because we'll be hearing the same thing this morning. Sorry, we are still talking, huh? Am I right? We're still talking. Tell the person again, I'm so glad you're sitting next to me. Do you know why I'm so glad? We're going to be hearing the same thing. Then ask the person again, is your result going to be higher than mine? The next 365 days will determine. So are you ready for me? So let's talk about the 10x. The 10x. The 10x. So fasten your seatbelt. I'm going to be taking you on a journey. Am I allowed to move around because I can see cameras? Or I have to stand here? How far can I go? I can, can I go as far as this? This is the farthest I can go. And this side, this is the farthest I can go. Bro, yeah. just saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. All right, all right. All right, because having to stand behind this place, you can suddenly hear, praise the Lord. <laughs> so that's why I, I want to move around. So first thing I said, but I want to take you all on a journey. First, I want to take us through history. Because history is very, very, very powerful. Very powerful. Many of us actually aren't studying history right now. And I was asked to wear suits. That's why I'm wearing suits. But suits is very not convenient for me, man. History is very powerful. History tells us a lot about culture and what has worked and what is not working. It's so painful that many of us are trying to change the world. But we don't know history. And one of the funniest issues you will know about life is that you can't change history until you know history. Many of us are trying to change what we know nothing about. And it's so funny when I see people trying to change history, but you ask them, okay, where are you coming from? They don't know where they're coming from. You can't change no history. And not only that, we all are living histories. I sat out with some young people recently and I asked them a few questions. One of them actually is this. In the next 100 years, where are you going to be? Can I ask you the same question? You'll be where? You'll be on the same planet Earth. Now that depends on your philosophy. <laughs> what will you be in the next 100 years? You'll be in heaven. You'll be chilling with God. What will you be in the next 100 years? Can I tell you the truth? Physically, you may be dead. But you believe in the minds and cultures of people. What you've done, what you've said, what you've believed will be carried on by people who will be living at that time. Is the same you? Okay, yeah. let's leave that part. I don't want to go into philosophy. <laughs> let's not go into philosophy. So we all are living histories. And you also cannot make history. So it's important we understand that history is very, very powerful. Based on history, I've come to discover that when you place human beings on five pedestals, there are different kinds of humans. Let's start on the ground of morality. There are those we call the good, the bad, and the in-between. They are not good, they are not bad. But they are good, bad. Depending on where you're coming from. True or true? So on morality, we have that one. On this plot of resources, we have those that are have and have nots. Those who don't have and those who have. And also based on pursuit in life, we have those we call the chop out, the old outs, the drop out and all out. Chop out are those who say to themselves, you know what, I'm not going to do anything about life. Yes, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. Then we have those who call the old out who will tell you, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to stay in my own comfort zone and whatever I get, I will thank God for it. Then we have the dropouts. Those who started out, who said, this year is my year. I will blow this year. Now it's April. There's no matchbox yet. Dropouts. They will not have the haul out. Those who will go and say to themselves, no matter what it takes, I'm going to get it. We have people like that. Then number four, based on relevance, we have those who call the relevant and those who are irrelevant. And we have those who call the relics who were once relevant but no longer relevant. When it comes to Nollywood, 
We know those who are relevant. True or true? And we know those who are not relevant. And we know those who are relics. Who like to tell the history of the industry? But they are no longer in the industry. Now, based on productivity, which is why I'm here, we now have those we call the 1X and the 10X people. 1X people have minimal results, ordinary results. And the 10X people have extraordinary results. And we will always have this. But can I shock you with one statement? You may disagree, but your conscience won't disagree. Do you know that the good girls don't get the good seats? I like the way you sat up. Do you know the good guys don't always get the good seats? Now, many of you are rambling and trying to check all the good people you know. <laughs> and you're asking yourself, which seat are they seated upon? The good guys don't always get the good seats. The bad guys seem to be sitting on the good seats. Let's cast our mind back. The people you thought would never make it when you were in school have made it. The people you thought would make it are trying to make it. Why? That's a conversation for another day. But I discovered based on research that people we call bad guys seem to always get the good sense. Not because they do bad things, but because they understand that book sense is not the same as street sense. <laughs> Many of you are book wise, but street foolish. <laughs> and the ones you call Olodo are street wise. Let's learn from history. I want to pick a story that many of us may be familiar with. There's a story of two people called Jacob and Esau. These two guys were born to a religious family. As a matter of fact, their parents asked God, precisely the mother asked God, what is going on in my stomach? And God replied and said to her, two nations are inside of you. The younger will serve, the older will serve the younger. And history the one we call the bad guy acted badly even when they were being born. Held the legs of the elder when they were coming out. But something strange happened afterwards, which is where I'm headed to. History tells us that these two boys grew up and they took different paths. Esau was a cunning hunter. He was a man of the field. I will explain all these ones later on. Jacob was a plain man. He was dwelling where? In tents. Isaac loved Esau because of food. Rebekah loved Jacob for another reason. There is something about these two guys. Esau was a 1X man. As I'm going to show you shortly, many of us are 1X. Jacob was a 10X man. And there were some certain things he did that made him 10x. Esau did that made him 1x. Are you ready to know that this morning? Sorry, do you want to know that this morning? Let's start with Esau this morning. Let me run it through what made Esau a 1x man. Number one, Esau was a slave to his appetite. Like many of us today, we don't know what is called delayed gratification. I want it now. What happened? I must get it now. If I don't get it now, now or never. Esau was a slave to his appetite. History shows to us. He came in one day and he told his younger brother, I'm hungry. The younger brother, who was a powerful negotiator, which is one of the things that make you a 10x, 
told him straight, I'll give you this food, but give me your birthright. And what did he say? What is birthright to me when I'm about to die? Oga, naoli ongao. I'm about to die. What is, what, what is bad rights to me? What happened? All I need is just sign the documents. And because of his appetite, what happened? He lost it. One ass guys are slave to the appetite. Tap your neighbor again. Hope you are not a slave to your appetite. Can I show you three powerful appetites that you need to have control over? Are you ready for it? Some of you will not like me after these three. Number one is food. <laughs> it's food. Some people are what we call FFO, for food only. When you have not eaten, you shake. I have not eaten. Because I have not eaten, my body is shaking. No, 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 no. Appetite, food. Some of you, that mountain must be high. And it is leveled. You have not started. Food. The second one is sex. Uh -huh, I caught you. <laughs> sex. Many of us have sold our productivity on the platform of sex. You can't do without anything on sex. Go check anybody who has listened to the talk. They control their Z. And the third one is power. Then it's an appetite for power. Ability and the crave to want to make it big, to have power, to have authority, to have control. If you don't have a strong mastery over this appetite, you may never be a 10x. Why? Behind power, there's an agenda. Agenda is run on the corridors of power. And when you don't understand the agenda behind power, you'll be a slave of power. Because the truth is this. Powerful people don't talk in public. They control those who talk in public. What you call power, actually is not power. It's being controlled. Get your PVC, get your PVC. Vote, 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 vote. Do you think those who voted for were those in power? No. They were selected by those who really own power. Which is why, when they come into what we call power, they have to do the bidding of those who put them in power. Tap your neighbor say, overcome your quest for power. Number two, he was not a nurturer. Esau was not a nurturer. How? Oh, Esau lived from hand to mouth. As he makes it, he eats it. As he makes it, he eats it. And many of us, as we make it, we chop on. We don't even have a fantastic philosophy. Now, a person will make the money, suppose spend that more. Spend the money on the body that makes the money. So you make it, you chop it, you make it, you chop it. What you don't know is this. When you eat all you make, you will never have a meal at the point of your needs. And it's one of the pains of this generation. We make it, but we eat it. We're not nurturers. We're not nurturers. Esau was an hunter. As an hunter, all he does is he catches one thing at a time. After he has caught it, they dissect it, they eat it, and that's all. And that was why the day he was hungry, there was no food. Are we together now? The day he was hungry, there was no food. Number three, Esau was a bad negotiator. He negotiated from a point of defeat. And many of us, I know we're all young here, can I tell you the truth? You need to understand negotiation. Why? Life doesn't give you what you expect. Life actually gives you what you negotiate for. On a daily basis, we negotiate. And the truth is, the future belongs to him or her who understands negotiation. Life doesn't give you what you deserve. Life gives to you what you negotiate. Esau was not a powerful negotiator. For example, Esau was negotiating Esau was negotiating with, with an empty stomach. He was hungry. The same way many of us are hungry today. For example, a record label walks up to you. They look at your fantastic voice and they say to you, we, we will build you. 
YouTube say, yes, build me, sir. Build me, ma. They look at you. They bring a document and say, sign this. We'll pay you 10 million. You have not seen 10,000. They will pay you 10 million. What happens to you? <laughs> I don't blow. I don't blow. And the 10 million simply means for the next 10 years, you work for them. And for every money you make, they actually take about 80%. Now, let's, I'm not trying to radical record labor. Don't get me wrong. But when you negotiate, when you are extremely hungry, you don't see everything. When you are negotiating, when you are hungry for success, hungry for power, hungry for a job, hungry for the next level, you don't see everything. And that is why when you now begin to get settled a little bit, you now begin to fight record labor. So you people are, should, you are ripping me. You are ripping me. You are ripping me. You are ripping me. They were not ripping you. You were negotiating from hunger. Are we together now? You go for an interview. They look at you. They look at your potential. And they say to you, they say to themselves, this guy, we need this guy to build this company for the next five years. And they just look at you. We'll pay you 500,000. And just, your eyes pops out. Hey! What happened? You're negotiating from a point of defeat. If time permits, I'll show you how Jacob negotiated. Because 10x people are powerful negotiators. They're powerful negotiators. Number whatever am I right? Number four. Esau didn't understand that there was something bigger than choice. He made a choice, but he didn't know there's something more powerful than a choice. Do you know what that thing is? It's called consequence. You don't choose your consequences, but you choose your choice. But after you made the choice, your choice determines the consequences. Esau made a choice. He did not know that hitting that food alone was going to cost his old generation serving his younger brother. He didn't know that, yes, your life is personal, but your life is not private. Every decision you make affects the next generation. Are we together now? He didn't know that. And he became a victim of the consequences of the choice he made. Tap your neighbor and say, before you make a choice, consider the consequences. Because consequences are longer than the choice you make. Do you understand that? Number five, let me run now. What you don't value, you lose. One as guys don't understand this. What you don't value, you will eventually lose it. Why? Everything on earth gravitates towards those who value it. There's a law of science. It's a law of use. That what you don't use, you lose. And it's the same thing that happened to Esau. Esau didn't value number one. He didn't value the bet rights. Esau didn't value his father's blessings. He didn't value a lot of things. And because he didn't value it, what happened? He lost it. What you don't value, you will eventually lose. And that was one of the key things that happened to Esau. Let me give us two more. Then I go to, straight to Jacob. I wrote in here. I said, woe unto you. Sorry. I said, what to you when wrong people see more value in you than you see in yourself? And that was what happens to 1x people. A 1x person doesn't see value in himself. Is that when the wrong people see value in you, they are going to use you. And they will use you big time. The last one I'm going to share in here is that 1x people don't have value, but they like value. For example, Nigeria is a country We like value, but we barely had value. We have crude oil, but we don't have them refined. True or true? You know the foreigners issue? The value of a thing is not in its raw state. The value of a thing is in its refined state. I think I have a picture in here. Look at this. Sorry, look at this one. Can you see this? Now, what you have in here are the raw materials. Am I right? That the raw materials in here. When it's a work in progress, we're making the wheel, we're making the steering, we're making the tires. The finished product is what? Come on, talk to me. The finished product is what? The finished product is what? Is the bicycle. What is more expensive? Is it the bicycle or the raw material? It's more expensive? The bicycle is what? What? 
It's more expensive. Many of the time, we are dealers of raw material. Your talent is raw. Your, everything you are doing is raw material. You can't be a 10x when you deal with raw material. You become a 10x when you actually have a finished product. Tap your neighbor and say, what is the product of your life? Look at your other neighbor again and ask a simple question. What is the product that you are selling? Okay, look at your back and ask the person at your back and say, which product do you sell? What's the neighbor's response? All right, let's get to 10x now. 10x, I'm going to run a bit. 10x, why become a 1x man? When you can become what? A 10x man. Is it possible to be a 10x? Yes. 100% possible. 100% possible. How? Let me take you on the journey. The journey of what I call the anatomy of the man called what? Jacob. How did Jacob become a 10x man? The first one is this. Jacob was self-driven. Jacob was visionary. Jacob knew what he wanted out of life. He knew. Please, let me ask your lovely neighbor, what do you want? What do you want out of life? Many of us like this statement. Hustle, oh, hustle. I'm hustling. I'm jama, 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 jama. What really do you want out of life? Jacob knew what he wanted. Which is why when he was negotiating with Esau, he did not ask Esau for several things. He was specific on what he wanted. He asked him, give me your bet rights. Do you know what you want? Do you know what you want? Any 10x person you know, they understand what they want. Number two, Jacob was a cultivator and a nurturer. He was someone who was cultivating and nurturing. Anything that entered Jacob's hands will not remain the same. He was a cultivator. I want to challenge you this morning. If what you have is not growing your hands, you are an Esau. If what you have in your hands is not growing, you are an Esau. You are a one X man. You are a one X woman. Jacob was a nurturer. He was a nurturer. When he was to get his father's blessing, what happened? Esau went to the farm to go and find animal. Jacob went to the backyard to pick an animal. Why? He was nurturing them at his backyard. I want to get it now. What do you have in your hands that you are nurturing? That you've been nurturing for the past five years? What are you brooding on for the past two years? Esau was actually a catcher and eat. Jacob was a nurturer. What dream are you nurturing? What dream are you nurturing? 10x people nurture things. They build things. They don't live just for today. They live for tomorrow. They live for tomorrow. Number three. Let's do about this. Let's do about this one. Number three. Jacob chose his battle. Can I challenge someone this morning? I want us to read this statement together. One, two, go. Many of you like fighting. Oh, I don't fight. Some of you like arguments. No, you cannot come and name me. That means you know. I'm, I don't know. I will defend myself. I'll defend myself. Don't honor every fight. Some fights are unnecessary. I want to get it now. Write this down. Focus creates blindness. When you know where you are going, you don't check every street. When you know where you're headed to, you don't answer every dog that is barking. Joblessness makes you attend to every dog barking. Jacob chose his fights. You need to understand 
that you don't need to honor every invitation to a quarrel, to a fight. You don't need to defend yourself at every given time. Are we together now? Life. Do you want to hear this? There are four kinds of fights in life. There are fights. Okay, I think I have it here. Okay. Ron, there are fights that you fight. There are fights you fight. Number two, there are fights that we fight. That you need a company of people to fight. You need to be in the right relationship to fight. Number three, there are fights that you don't fight at all. Why? They are unnecessary. They are highly unnecessary. Highly unnecessary. And there are some fights that you just leave to God to fight. Are we together? Don't fight every fight. You will waste your energy. Energy is too expensive to be used on every battle. Are we together now? Energy is too expensive to be used on every battle. Number four, he understood branding. Jacob understood branding. Can I speak to you this morning? Many of us don't understand branding. But can I tell you the truth this morning? Even if you do or don't understand, you're actually a brand. You are the CEO of your own brand. Oh, I work for SQI. I know you do, but you are actually a brand. And you are the CEO of your own brand. As you must understand that everything you do and don't do is contributing or eliminating or diminishing your brand. Are we together? It's contributing or eliminating your brand. Jacob understood that Jacob is not Israel. He understood the fact because the word Jacob actually means a cheat. And the word Israel actually means a prince with power. So he understood that he needed to rebrand. And it's never too late to change your brand story. You need to be brand conscious. What is a brand? A brand actually is the perception of people concerning who you are and what you do. A brand is what people say about you when you're not around. A brand is the image that you leave in the minds of people when you are not around. So in case you don't know, people are working on your brand every time. What reputation, ladies and gentlemen, or what's the reputation of your name in the marketplace? I'm still young. I mean, I don't just start my career. I'll calm down. That is the best time to build a brand. That's the best time to build a brand. So what's the reputation of your name in the marketplace? That's the power of your brand. The people we call bad guys that are getting the good seats, they know what it means to build a brand. Can I shock you? Portable is a brand. You may not like him, but the day I heard that guy say, I am a content creator. I understood that he was sure of what he was doing. He has given you more slangs than the slang you have. You even understand. Why? Brand consciousness. You're a brand. And there are different kinds of brands. There are brands you love to love. There are brands you love to eat. There are brands you hate to love. And there are brands you actually know nothing about. Which brand are you? Type your neighbor and say, work on your brand. Work on your brand. Work on your reputation in the marketplace. History tells us that a good name is rather to be chosen than riches. Because of time, I, I eliminated 10 critical things about a good name. But let me tell you, in a nutshell, how can I work on my brand? There's an acronym I call Eat Your Brand. Eat, E-A-T. Eat your brand. And each of those words actually means something. But I'm going to give us only eat this morning. What is the E in eat? It talks about your expertise. What are you good at? What are you good at? If you're good at something, stop winking in the dark. I want to get it now. Stop winking in the dark. Stop winking in the dark. 
If you're good at something, go to the house top and let everybody know, this is my area of expertise. Why? As you begin to build your expertise, it gets to A. You become an authority in a space. There was a time in football when there's a, when it's time to play free kick. There's a man people have given an authority to in that space. His name is David Beckham. When it's time to play free kick in that area, sometimes even the commentators will tell you is a go. Why? He has become an authority, an Orisha in that area. Where are you building authority? You can't turn X where you are not an authority figure. An authority doesn't come by age. It doesn't come by muscle. You don't need several keys to open the door. Only the right key. That's what an authority makes out of you. Are we together? That's what an authority makes out of you. And the T talks about trust. Can you be trusted? Because no matter how expert, expertise that you have, if you cannot be trusted, you cannot be tried. You cannot be tasted. You need to build trust. You need to build trust. Type your neighbor again and say, eat your brand. Develop expertise. Cultivate authority in an area. Then build trust. Because trust is a currency in human relationships. If you can't be trusted, you can't be tested, you can't be tested. And you cannot even be tried. So you need to hit your brand. Let me share two more with you. Jacob was a powerful negotiator. This guy can negotiate anything. If you're familiar with history, you will know that Jacob negotiated almost everything in life. He negotiated almost everything in life. What did I do? Okay. He negotiated almost everything in life. Issue tells us he negotiated birth rights. He negotiated with Lebanon. He negotiated wives. He negotiated when he was meeting with Esau. He negotiated when he was even wrestling with God. When God and himself, based on Esau, were fighting. And God said, oh, days are about to break. I need to run away. So you are not going anywhere until you bless me. That's negotiation. That's negotiation. I want us to take this statement together. Stop taking no without ne a negotiation. Stop taking no. Can we take it together? One, two, go. There is nothing you cannot negotiate. Many of us, they said no, so me, I've gone no. No! There is yes, no, and there is a yo. Yo is I will shift your yes and no a little bit. There is nothing you cannot negotiate. Sir. There is nothing you can negotiate. Jacob negotiated everything. Everything. They gave him wife. He picked the wrong wife. He went back again. Let's get another wife again. Some of you will have said, this, maybe that's what God said I should have. No, he went back again. They did not pay him well. He went back again. He said, let's negotiate salary. He negotiated again. He understood that life will never give you what you deserve. Life gives you what you negotiate. I discovered, don't worry, you read this in my book, 12 ways to negotiate like Jacob. But I'll give you about two or three here. Number one, he was a strategic planner. Before he met anybody, he planned meeting you. When he was to meet Esau, after he stole his birthright, history tells us, what did he do? He planned the children and the wife that he did not like, he put them in front. The one he liked, he put them after him. Then he sent 100 animals in front. What was he doing? In case you want to kill, kill those ones. In case you want to fight, I have animals to tell you, I'm negotiating everything I've stolen from you, take it back. That was planning. So how do you enter a negotiation table without a plan? There's something on the negotiation called Zopa and Batna. You need to know your Zopa, your Batna, before you show up. It was a strategic planner. Tennis guys, plan. Not only that, Jacob understood what we call strategic silence. 
Some of you have sold your future because you talk too much. There are places you go to, all you do is shut up. Solomon told us once, he said, when a fool even keeps quiet, people think he's wise. But when the fool begins to talk, people know how fool is full of foolishness. Strategic silence. When you're talking with people, when you keep quiet, many of the time they sell themselves short. I want to get it now. You are planning to negotiate some fees. And you got there. They ask you, how much do you want to collect? One of the powers of radio silence is, I would love to hear your offer first. Why? You may be planning 10 million, but they are planning 50 million. Strategic silence. You talk too much. Work generation. Learn silence. Learn silence. In understanding strategic silence, he also understood active listening. He understood that when you're listening to people, you need to hear what they are saying, what they are not saying, how they are saying what they are saying, and what they are avoiding to say. Jacob understood that when he was dealing with his negotiation table. And the other one in here, Jacob created what we call scarcity perception. The way he made Esau love the porridge, you would think that's the only porridge in the whole world. The way Esau felt, if I don't eat this thing, I'm not eating any other thing again in life. That is what we call scarcity perception. Scarcity perception. He worked on it. And it's something we all need to develop. Why? Number one, there is nobody like you on earth. It's not rude to say so. Why? Nobody has a fingerprint. True or true? Nobody has a toe print. True or true? Nobody has your DNA. True or true? So you are... For someone to have you in their space, you, you need to make them understand they can never have somebody else like you again. That is cast the perception. If I don't do this for you, nobody else can do it the way I've done it. Why? Scarcity perception. Tennis guy make you feel that way. Which is why those who use Apple products make you feel as if you're a dunce. We know them. If you can operate a MacBook, if you can operate an iPhone, you have to have this. True or true? Only 100 people will say false. <laughs> Boy, just cast the perception. That is what Steve Jobs did for us. It's a scarcity perception. Why? They will hand you a MacBook, hand you an iPhone. You two will be looking like a fool. Okay, how do they press this one? It's deliberate. Scarcity perception. Then also, Jacob had what we call emotional intelligence. He did not lose his temper at any point. He controlled himself. He controlled himself. All right, the last one as a wrap up. Jacob was a leverager. Jacob was a leverager. Tennis guys understand that, number one, nobody can make it as an island. You need to understand that you need to work with and through people. He understood this. All through history, Jacob was a user of people and things. Esau, the ten x man, is someone who believes that if I can't do it on my own, nobody else can do it. Can I tell you guys the truth? Ten x people understand that it's not always about the how. Sometimes it's about the who. You may know how to do it, but if you don't have the necessary who around you, the how can frustrate you. Many of you know how to do some powerful things, but there is no leg that will take you to those who need what you do. Sorry, am I speaking to somebody here? Some of us have the solution to the problem of Nigeria. But you don't even know your local government chairman. <laughs> so all your solution is here. Is here. Jacob understood the power of people. At almost every part of Jacob's life, 
he was sitting on the back of somebody. To get the blessing, his mother. To run away from Esau, Laban. To have a wife, Laban. He understood that to get the wealth he needed, he needed to get it from Laban. So he understood the power of leverage. You can't make it on your own. You need to understand that. Tenants, guys, are leverager. Why? Because the who, many of the time, outweighs the how. The how, we know. Many of us know how to make it. Many of us know how to program. Many of us know how to write or develop app. But you don't know who will take you to the people that we use the app. And that is one of the key things 10x people do. Can I share with you, in conclusion, I have 12, but I'll share six. Six things you must leverage if you want to 10x your results. Are you ready for this? Sorry, are you ready for this? Number one, you need to learn how to use OPM, other people's money. Other people's money. Your bank account is too small to make you grow. Ask anybody who has extraordinary results. They were leveragers of other people's money, including the almighty Dangote. Dangote started his business with somebody's 500 million. Is it 500 million or 500,000? 500,000. You need to understand, there's a place for other people's money. Why do you think corporations sell shares? Sorry, talk to me. Why do you think they sell shares? Because they want to make you a part owner? People that can sell you, buy you out very soon? No, no, no. There's a place for other people's money. There's a place for it. Number two, you need to also understand that you can leverage on other people's time. Other people's time. Everybody on earth has 24 hours, both the rich and the poor. True or true? But you know one thing. Do you know you can leverage on people's time to add to yours? Do you know you can? Do you know that you don't always, you don't need to always drive? Someone can drive for you while you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Do you know that somebody's time? Sorry, do you know that somebody's time? Do you know you can leverage the people's time to help them cook for you while you do something else and you pay them for cooking? Is that not somebody's time? You now want to do everything. By the time you've done 10 hours, I am tired. Why are you tired? You don't know how to use other people's time. Why drive for four hours, for three hours from Lagos to Ibadan when I can actually have a lovely sleep when that slow locomotive engine is working? I want to get it now. You are not 10 in because your mind never shows you that you can use other people's time. Number three, you can actually use other people's brand. <laughs> True. You can use other people's brand to grow. Do you know some organizations will never pay you, but they will actually brand you? Are we together? I see a lot of young people here. Can I tell you the truth? Actually, I came with some of my books in here. One of the books, Lots of Work, I shared in there. Any organization you work for, gives you one of these four things. Number one, some will pay you money. But by the time you leave the organization, here, blank, Olodo, they'll pay you well. Ask anybody, many people who have worked in banks before, they were well paid, but after they leave the bank, they can't do any other thing again. I'm, I'm telling you guys the truth, it's based on research. Some will pay you well, but do you know training? Number two, some will train you, but will not put money in your hands. So by the time you're going, you are fully loaded, but they may not pay you well. Number three, 
Some may not pay you well, may not brand you, may not um, train you, but the thing that will do is if you ever have to leave them, you cannot go below that level. And the fourth one, they may not pay you well, they may not train you, they may not give you a level, but they will brand you. For example, you walk up to somebody and say, where do you work? I work with my Oracle. Oh, I work with Microsoft. What comes to your mind? You're a big guy. But it's guy really big. Oh, I work with Chevron. Oh, I've spent 10 years in mobile. What comes to your own mind when you hear people talk like that? Hey, I back here. But if you engage them, they may have nothing here. Why? They were branded by that label. One of my mentees came one day and said he got a job with Facebook, but said the money is not well paid. I said, stay there. I said, stay there. He said, if you leave and you say, I consulted for Facebook and you're a bloody Nigerian. I said, people will listen to you because Facebook will never employ any other person like that. Why? Other people's brand. Tennis guys understand the power of other people's brand. Number four, other people's skills. There's a place for other people's skill. You are not all skillful. You can't be the goalkeeper and the striker at the same time. You can't. So you must understand the place of other people's skill. And the fifth one, you need to understand the power of other people's what? Knowledge. Nobody has the monopoly of knowledge. There are some certain things you don't know that other people know. Are we together now? So when you know that you don't know and you're willing to learn from other people, that is when your knowledge bank increases. And the final one, other people's what? Connection. There's a rule that I'm going to wrap up with. The rule is called the Andrews rule, the sixth degree rule. It simply says that you are six people away from meeting begins. That you are actually six people away from meeting Bill Gates. And it's based on research. Google it. You are six people away from meeting Bill Gates. You are six people away from meeting the Barack Obama. You are six people away from meeting Jagaban. What determines the six is the caliber of the six. Why? Because there's always somebody that knows somebody that also knows somebody that you are trying to meet. And until you understand that you can leverage on the power of other people's connection, you will be in your own cocoon doing your 1x activity for a long time. For a long time. So, on that note, I want to say a very big thank you to you guys. Let me just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I want to say a very big thank you to you guys for having me. And I believe you've learned one or two things this very morning. God bless you. Please, a round of applause for <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. So I know some of us have been jotting, so I want to ask, please, um, let's start putting together our questions. Let's start putting together our questions. Very, very important. He's live here and he asks, so please, can the ushers just go around so we can pick up the questions? Or if you can come out and just ask your questions, it will be really applaudable. Please, let's put together our questions. Um, so, can someone tell me one particular thing that they've learned from today's um, today's nuggets, today's um, teachings? Just come out. Just talk about it. Come on. Someone. One person. Just give a brief summary of what you have learned today. I'll pick somebody. I'll pick somebody. I'll just call out somebody and then
Okay. Um, <laughs> You've spoken before, so I don't want to call you. Okay, come, 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 come and tell us. Yes. Just tell us briefly what you have. Give a brief summary of what. Come, come closer. All right. Good day, everyone. Um, although I came a bit late, but what I meant was very inspiring. I learned that, um, I learned the dichotomy between Esau and um, Jacob, how they differ and how they were, um, the smart work um, by Jacob and Esau, how he was foolish with, no, he had, he had it all, but he lost it because he was not smart. So I learned that in whatever you do in life, you have to be smart. You have to be very smart. You have to be wise. And I already, although I can't recall everything now, but what I've gained, I can assure myself that as I move on in life, I'll put them into practice. It's going to help me. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Mo. Okay, so, um, okay, please, please. Okay. So, good day, everyone. So, during your lesson, uh, I kind of learned there are one X guys and there are 10 X guys. And you made mention of something that if you hold something in your hand and that thing dies, it means you are an ESO. So I don't know. Some people who engage in, I don't know, maybe uh, a skill. I can choose to be a barber. And I might be there for like six months and I cannot properly. So that thing is dying in my hand. Let me, let me put it that way. And I can choose another field and excel there. So what if my passion is to be a stylist? It's dying. I want to be a 10x guy, being a stylist. And maybe when I try trading or every other thing, that is working fine. So how do I, is, would it come to me consciously? Or I don't even know how to put that question. But I, I want to say maybe is it by choice to be a one next person, because I definitely want to be a 10 next in everything I lay my hands on. But that thing I'm passionate about is dying. So what do I do in that, in that position? Thank you. Uh, a fantastic question, but you're dragging me into another topic. Um, passion itself is not a direction. Passion is a fuel. First is to understand what is my direction in life. Um, we have passion for several things, but that doesn't mean that's our direction. Having passion for styling necessarily doesn't mean you must be a barber. There are different ways to style, and there are different things you can style. Styling is just your ability to combine and shape things. But is it compulsory it has to be here that you are styling? No. You can style people. You can, be, you can, you can style presidents. You can help celebrities put their clothes, their dressing together. So that's passion. But first is to understand what's my direction. So your passion was given to you to increase your speed in your given direction. So until you know your direction, you'll be, you'll be, push, you'll be pouring fuel all around. So which is why direction is more powerful than speed. Because it may be running in the wrong direction and you're running very fast. By the time you get to the end of that journey, you'll discover that more. This is not where I'm supposed to be. So the first is before you start tweaking your passion, first understand what is my direction. When you get a direction right, then you cannot begin to channel your passion in that direction. Else you waste a lot of time and energy. Do you understand? So I actually I came with some of my books, and one of them actually could answer that question for you. Tools for the journey. Tools for the journey helps you understand what journey am I actually taking. Then it also tells you what are the tools for the particular journey I'm going for. And one of them is passion. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so just hold on. Okay, so um, FLA, I think you just have to start. Okay. Please tell us your name and the partner. Um, uh, my name is um, Ola Tunji and software, I'm a software engineer. And 
I learned a lot from what he has said today about the mind talk. And what I see about it is we all have potential energies inside of us. But how do we turn it into a kinetic energy is what he's trying to bring in. And secondly, what I see there is a lot of people here that has a motive and a direction. But the major thing is how do you apply things and how do you see yourself? As I'm, I'm a construction engineer, I'm a marketing consultant, I'm a realtor, I have fish farm, I do I import, I export, uh, I export dry fish, I export snails. So what people doesn't know, this, G, this GSM International Market at Idiokwe, I'm part of the facilitator, I'm the market consultant. So now, a, a security, um, a cyber security again. So that's what I do. Okay, so um, I think I should just let him talk, then we'll answer the question. You have to come to the camera, please. All right. Okay, all right. Um, yes, good morning. Yeah, my name is Tori Lokbayarolo. I'm from um, Product Design. So, yes, um, so you will agree with me that um, we as Nigerians, that we have to work twice as hard to meet up or to catch up with the rest of the world. And for me, I want to relate what you've... I mean, dished out here in relating to what um, young people like myself and everyone here who are transitioning or who are that in tech, because you would also agree with me that the level of information um, we have been given in the tech space is very minimal compared to what is out there exactly in the tech space. Then how do we catch this reality? How do we become that um, human, um, sorry, 1x and... Um, 10x, right? How do we become that? Because the competition in the tech space is too much. And that competition is leading to depression, tiredness, and dropping out. So how do we navigate the area of becoming an... Yes, exactly. Okay, so if I understand the two questions, he's going to answer the two questions. So one is application, the second is balancing, so... All right. Um, for application, uh, what I usually tell people... Where's the man? Okay. What, what I usually tell people is it's better we work in the light of what we already know. Um, during COVID, one of the key things that actually happened, which also is happening right now, is what we call knowledge constipation. Where people keep acquiring knowledge, but not applying it. So you get to a, a position where you know so much, but you do so little. And when you get into that position, the frustration you will have is people who know little, but they are over applying what they know, will be having more results than you do. And at that point, you'll be getting angry. That why now, why now? But I know better than this. No, no, it's not about knowledge. Knowledge is not wisdom. You can know so much and actually have no results. So you need to get a position. Knowledge actually is not power, it's potential power. It's potential power. Knowledge is potential power. You may know and not do. You may know and not do. So there are two different things. So you need to get a part in your life where you start saying to yourself, based on what I know now, what am I going to do with what I, what I know? And that's where application become, begins. So as you're acquiring knowledge, one of the key things you begin to say to yourself is, what am I going to do with what I already know? Because until you get to that point, you've just been learning and learning and learning. Now, my brother, uh, we're talking about we walk, we walk times two, more than those on the outside space. So how can we balance, am I right, and 10x what we have? One of the key things uh, we'll, I would like to share with you, especially being in a tech space, don't only pass the test of locality ensure that you are actually applicable globally. Don't only pass the test of locality and you end up failing the test of universality. Because your competition in the tech space, they are not here. As a tech guy, you're competing with people in India, I hope you know. You're competing with people 
that they may pay less and do more. And because of that, you now begin to, first of all, widen your perspective and begin to say to yourself, what can I do that anybody in the world, if they do it, they can't push me down? That's actually where it starts from. Am I hearing myself? So you, you, you get what I'm trying to say? That's where it starts from. So you need to ensure you're not failing the test of universality. Because many tech, Nigerian tech guys fail this test of universality. We are very, very good in what we do. But when we are put side by side with those who are not in this particular locality, they may push us down, not because they know better, but they have access to what we don't have access to. Do you get it now? And one of the key things you need to start saying to yourself is, if I'm supposed to be globally relevant, I need to begin to ask myself, what are the things that people outside my space, here and here, have access to that I don't have access to? Do you understand me? Then personally, begin to make yourself available for those stuffs. Do you get me now? The way you can now want, you can leverage on relationships. You can leverage on relationships. There are people outside the space that could pull you in. For example, when, when I was deeply in HR, one of the key things I leveraged on was there was an association in the US that could give me access to a global space. So I called my cousins in Canada. I need to register for it because they could not accept my Nigerian card. So they made the register for me in the US, and I put access to that. As a life coach, what did I do? I needed to leverage on a global space. I joined ICF International in the US. What am I trying to do? I'm leveraging other territories to pull in resources and credibility in my space. So it's one of the key things I strongly believe if you leverage on, it will, it will pull you in. Then also, don't only um, benchmark yourself with those who are doing what you're doing in Nigeria. It's global icons against global high cons. Once in a while I sit down, I pick five top people in my space globally, and I begin to search what are they doing that I'm not doing? What are they selling that I'm not selling? What are they leveraging that I'm not leveraging? When I begin to pull all those things together, what am I doing? I'm trying to ensure I pass a test of universality. All right. Thank you very much, um, Hefele. Um, please, we are still expecting your questions. Kindly send in. Um, <laughs> your question. Someone left a question here. That's why I'm smiling. So the person says, in reality, is Jacob a bad person? No. Jacob is not a bad person. I'm serious. In reality, Jacob is not a bad person. Jacob is someone, if you're using your religious goggle, you tell me he's a bad individual, but he wasn't bad. Jacob was a tennis guy who knew what he wanted. He knew what he wanted and he went for it. So he's not a bad person, please. Okay, so um, another question here. Sorry. Okay, so the question is, do you think collaboration is one of the um, ways to make someone 10x person and how do you think collaboration can enhance and enhance help 10x person yeah do you think um, collaboration is one of the ways to make someone 10x person and how do you think collaboration can enhance or help 10x person uh, I think um, when I was talking about leveraging when I was talking about leveraging, I, I mentioned that. So I just wanted to show that to us in here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Most of what I shared in here is collaboration. Basically, it's collaboration. You, you actually 10x what you do when you collaborate. When you collaborate, I've heard people say over and over again that collaboration is the next competition. In the sense that when we begin to collaborate, we put ourselves in positions whereby we can do more than what we're currently doing. And that's what collaboration does for you. 
Collaboration gives you access to other people's money. For example, I have the brain, I don't have the money. Somebody else has the money, doesn't have the brain. What happens? We're coming together, we'll pull force together. Someone else has the connection, I don't have the connection, but I know how to do the work. So I do the work, you open the door, and we sell, we share the profits. So collaboration works, but how can I make collaboration work? Don't collaborate based on emotion. Don't collaborate because I just like this guy. No, no. When money enters, you may not like the guy. When you want to collaborate, collaborate with your eyes opened and ensure you sign the dotted lines. Get a lawyer involved when you're collaborating. It's one of the key things that will put all of you in check so that you don't also tilt towards the wrong side. It's going to help you when you're collaborating. So I think that, that speaks to that. Thank you, thank you very much, Feli. Any other question? Okay, so um, I have some key points here I'm going to um, read out to us, just in case you came in late or we need to understand what we are talking about here. Remember, um, 10X, we are after the 10X, the extraordinary, um, the extra, doing the extraordinary, getting the extraordinary results. And we don't want to remain on the one X minimal result, you know. So for every aspect of your life or for every area you are, or aspect you are in the tech space, please go after the 10 X. So it says, um, life doesn't give you what you deserve. Life gives to you what you negotiate for. Life doesn't give you what you deserve. Life gives you what you negotiate for. For some of us that I have been speaking with in SQI, you will hear me say you spend three extra hours after class or during the midnight hours with whatever you learned that particular day. Yes. If you spend three hours, just imagine for whatever you learn, you go home and spend three extra hours learning that thing. You're adding much more value than someone who close and go home and then put it on till the next day. The person comes and complain and say, um, I don't understand, it's too difficult. We give excuses. But putting in extra hours to whatever you're doing helps you. you you're taking it by force, right? You're, you're going extra mile to get what you want. It says every decision you make affects the next generation. For every one of us that are here, we are not here for ourselves alone. So, okay, please, you can come. Okay, so we are doing what we are doing for the next, we're putting down things together for the next generation. Please come up. Good morning, everybody. So my question is um, about negotiating, negotiation. Um, some of us, there are some times that we are not in the place to negotiate. We are just present and it's about our life. So. I'm talking about sometimes I'm at the front desk. So I see parents bring their children. Obviously, this child does not want to code. Either wants to do product design or wants to do data analysis. A data analysis, rather. But because the mom has an uncle who has a son that is a web developer that told them that he earns in dollars, which might not be, so the mom is insisting that this cooperative that I'm taking, you must learn web development. So at that point, those children, they just start. At that point, they can't negotiate it. They don't even allow them to see anything. So what can that kind of student do? And they have started already. Then they here, we? All right, one of them is also holding the microphone. Because let, let me give you my personal story. I, I read computer science, my, that was my first degree. But computer science for five years. And the, the funnest issue actually is, my father forced me to read it. At that time, I think um, that was when computer and the e-commerce started booming. And I had an uncle who used to work with Bill Gates then. So he told my father, said, hey, computer is the future. Computer is the future. Computer is the future. So my father said, you must study computer. So we were the first set of students in NIT in Lagos then. 
So I then I did programming. I did uh, I did web design. Even though I can't design a web now, I did. I wasn't doing for me because I could not negotiate with my parents. So when they forced me to university and say you must study computer science, I also did. When I got to second level, I found purpose. And I had two options. I had an option, is that I get out of school and follow purpose. And at that time, I was, I was broke. I, was, I didn't have any source of income except my parents. So, is that I leave and I go and start and I know I'm going to finance myself, which I cannot do. Or, I have to self-train myself in the direction I want to go. And I stay on what my parents have said, which is what I eventually did. So I spent the remaining four years studying computer science, but I can't remember Jack. You know the finance issue? I never had a carryover. I never had a carryover. I sat down, I did software architecture, software engineering. I passed, but I can't remember what I wrote. I can't remember what I wrote. But right there on campus, I started studying management. I started studying HR. I locked myself in the library and study books written by Peter Druckert as a university student. The ones I could not study for so long, I was photocopying school books. When I had an opportunity to do my IT in front of the level, I ensured I went to an HR firm for my IT. And I got to 500 level, I started my own consulting firm in 500 level. So there is nothing on earth you cannot negotiate. There's nothing. So if you say to yourself, I was forced to do what I'm doing, yes, you were forced because you don't have funds, but whilst you're doing what your parents are telling you to do, you have a choice. I was bereaved of social life at this point. Because when my other guys were socializing around, I was busy hitting books. By the time I left campus, the only books I had that were school books were the books that you have to buy to pass exam. So all those engineering maths books, I didn't have them. But if the books I have, they are the books who built me. I left school with two heavy traveling bags of books I used my pocket money to buy. That built me that the first job I got in a consulting firm, I failed the aptitude test, but they just said, let's, let's just listen to this guy. And I came early. And after I came here, those who came with first class after me had nothing to show in consulting. In an interview, they asked me a simple question. Can you write a proposal? I said, for which company? They said, for a consulting firm. I said, what kind of job are we talking about? So the woman was like, Sharele, why are you so arrogant? No, 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 I knew what they were asking me. So I said, okay, let's, let's, let's just play a scenario. We ought to have a, propo- a proposal for a training firm. So the training, I wrote a proposal sitting down writing an interview. Why? When I was on campus, I learned how to write proposals. So there's nothing you can't negotiate. After I left school, my father couldn't force me to go back to computer science. He couldn't. Because as soon as a copper, I started making money. I started training. I trained coppers. I certified coppers on a course. And I went back home and I gave my father the money. So he, that money was, don't tell me to go that direction again. This direction I've taken, there's money in it. So there's nothing can negotiate. There's nothing can negotiate. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please, a round of applause. Well... Okay, so from what FLA has said, for some of us that are here, if you know your parents forced you to do what you're doing, please don't relent, right? Look inward. There's something far more than um, what you're doing at the moment that your parents... Invest in what you want to do. Invest. And then read books. Do your research. I think I, I'm someone who talk about research a lot. If you don't have... You don't, if you don't read books, if you don't do research, ah, I, don't, I don't know. Please, investments into, um, <laughs> invest in books, invest, please come over. Okay, so I have a question from another campus here before you come over, okay? 
So, yes, um, it's a very funny question, FLA. <laughs> it said, um, Jacob was said to be a smart guy. That's bracket, Yahoo guy. <laughs> this discussion has been going on <laughs> on social media. How does, how does it settle that? <laughs> so, okay, um, just hold on while I... Yeah, my sincere apologies. Though it is not actually a question. Yeah, my name is Victor Fungai. Sorry for badging it. My name is Victor in the web development field. So concerning the parents forcing the child to do something he doesn't want to do, I was in that situation. I was forced to go to science, but then I was in science class. I decided I called my dad and said, no, I want to be in art class. He allowed I was in art. But here I am now, back in the science queue. So now, please don't clap yet. What I'm trying to say is that my mom would say, something like that. So yeah, eventually you don't want to be you want to be you don't want to be a coder, but you want to be in the design, blah blah. You can eventually get to the design and then you all, you want to go back to coding. It can actually be like that. So don't give up. Put in more effort, put in more concentration, and then go on. Thank you very much. Thank you for sharing your experience. Please. That that's actually is I, I I love I love your perspective, Victor. And it actually shows that life is a journey. As a journey through life, there are certain things that will change. I started in HR. I'm no longer in HR right now. I still do HR if need comes to it. I focus more on strategy right now and coaching. But that was where I started from. So life itself is a journey. You can evolve. Are we together now? You can evolve. Now, to the question of Jacob Yawo, social media. I saw that video. And I laughed. I laugh because when people speak, one of the key things you need to understand is ask yourself a question, who is talking? Don't just consume content. Always check the speaker. Who was talking? People speak from their own perspective. And people also speak from their experience and exposure. The person who said Jacob was a Yahoo boy Ask yourself a question, what profession is this man into? That's the first question. What experience does this person also have? Because you can't justify, uh, you can't justify some people's actions if you have never been burnt by it or if you have ever walked that path before. Jacob was not a Yahoo boy. Check it very well. He wasn't a Yahoo boy. Now, what could make you say Jacob was Yahoo? Was that Jacob actually lied to get the bet right? Am I right? Now, we were getting into Bible. If you study pre-context very well, the real Yahoo boy should have been Esau. Because Esau was trying to get from his father what he had sold years ago. That blessing was a blessing of the bet right. And Esau had sold the bet right. What Jacob should have done, rather than him actually disguising, Jacob should have told his father in front of Esau that this blessing does not belong to Esau again. It's mine. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. So it's like me in private. I sold you a land. Then suddenly I come in public, I said the land still belongs to me. That was what Esau was doing. That's why he was, he had sold it. The blessing he was receiving was a blessing of the birthright, which was not Esau's. So Jacob actually wasn't a Yahoo boy. He was trying to help himself to get what was rightfully his own. And also remember, before they were born, before they were born, the mother was informed that the young, the elder will serve the younger. <laughs> when it was time for the prophecy to be fulfilled, the father who did not hear wanted to transfer it to the elder, to the younger serving the elder. That's an error. I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say now. And remember where I started from. The father loved the elder because of food. 
So because of food, he was willing to give what does not belong to the guy to the guy. So who is the Yahoo boy there? It's not Jacob. It's not Jacob. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, FLA. Thank you. Please, a round of applause for, for him. Okay, so um, we can put, put our questions down and we'll, we'll definitely get across to FLA much later. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, like I was saying the other time, um, I'm just going to paraphrase. What you don't value, you lose. What you don't, um, you don't value, right? You lose. If you, if what you have in your end is not, is not, um, is not growing, you are an ASO. So, if what you have right now in your hand is not growing, look inward. Are you growing? Are you learning more? Are you becoming? Are you becoming a better person? Are you becoming? Remember, it's not our character also matters, right? In everything that we have been taught here today, factor in character. Factor in, um, I'm, reading a part of, I'm reading a book for this month, Atomic Habits, and trust me, it has helped open my eyes to a lot of things. So every month, tell yourself what you want to do, what you want to become, what you want to be added to you. It's not just you coming in here every day you're learning. Are you changing your character as a person, right? So focus, um, Create blindness. When you know where you are going to, you don't honor every, you know, invitation. Yes, very important. There's something he said about in, investing in himself that I'm going to ask every one of us to take home. Okay, while the father, the, the parent's expectation was high for him, he had his own personal goal and expectation. What is your personal goal and expectation for yourself, regardless of parents or guardian? What, what are you seeing yourself becoming, right? Um, stop taking no without a negotiation. We all are negotiators. You know, some of us come in here and say, okay, you have a particular amount of money to pay. Um, can you, that's, that's negotiation. Like, you don't have that particular money and you're interested in this. You can even give a very superb story and the person might buy it, right? So, negotiation should be part of you. Um, uh, and then, okay. You are six people away from meeting Barack Obama and Bill Gates. I think that's the last one I got. All right, thank you, thank you. <laughs> six, <laughs> why are you repeating the six? Okay, so um, at this point, we are going to be calling on Miss Ade doing for our announcements. And um, of course, Miss Bisoye, you will be closing. Uh, Miss Ade doing. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, so we have FLA's book here, Street Sense for Church Boys. Ah, uh -huh, I love this. Street Sense for Church Boys. And then we have, we have Laws of Work, Laws of Work. And then we have um, Tools for the Journey. So if you need to get these books, please. Speak to Miss Ade doing about it, and she'll get it across to you. Tools for the journey, laws of work, and street sense. I like this one in particular. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning, everybody. For those of you that are laughing, I know the reason why, but I'm not offended. <laughs> and if you don't know the reason why, why? you can ask me why? later. So, hope you have enjoyed ourselves today. Yeah. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. You mean code zoo? They sell it downstairs. You can get one. Okay, so on to the announcement. So, I'm sure we know that we have a program called NID. Okay, so NID is for two years. We have it at the Obomosho campus, which is the headquarters, and you can use that course, because it's a diploma course, you can use it as direct entry into the tertiary institution. Then you can speak with me at the front desk if you want to cross to doing the diploma or you have someone that 
wants to do that. Thank you. So a new cohort started last week for all our professional courses. You can still join in today if you have a friend that still wants to join in. You can join in and if not, they can join for next month because we take all our new cohorts first Monday of every new month. So also kindly be reminded about the price review coming up in May. As earlier announced, note that students that make payments and register before May will be excluded from the price review. So let's take advantage of this opportunity now. So we believe that many of us must have been speaking to our friends and our neighbors, our church members, our Islamic friends about SQI. So please, you can also inform them that we'll be reviewing school fees next month. And if they make a financial commitment today, they would not be affected by the increment in school fees. So it's like you're helping them. You know, it's not good to have a lot of 1x people around you. So try to develop other people so they are 10x and it makes the world a better place. Clap for me now. That's punchline. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So a good number of us here are IT students and we are core members. And I believe that we enjoyed the 20% discount. So in, in as much as we want to help the community, I believe that that's one of the things you should do. So speak to your friends that are IT students. Speak to your co-coppers to come here to any of our campuses, Dube, Iwo Road, Challenge, Abel Okuta, Oshogbo, and Ogbomosho, that they would enjoy 20% discount. And if you're not on IT and you paid your full school fees, don't be wicked. Just tell them, let them enjoy the 20% discount. Thank you very, very much. Have a lovely, have a lovely day. Um, this way. Clap now. So, our honorable guest speaker, thank you very much, sir, for sharing the insights which we need in succeeding in the tech world. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, staff members of this great institution, fellow students, we have come to the end of today's Mind Talk. Just like LTA, Mr. LTA told us, we can still work on our brand, we can change our brand. And I hope we had a very successful Mind Talk. Till next time, keep winning, keep being an authority of your brand, and keep the flag flying. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please sit down. So we know that when you hear something, it lasts for eight hours, you might likely not remember up to 10% of what you heard. So how do you regain back? I believe many of us did not write because we are programmers and we believe we can remember everything. So there are books here. It goes for a thousand naira. So that's just what means by Jaira. So just come for it. One thousand naira. Thank you. I'll be expecting. Bye. <laughs>